Welcome to Montreal, vibrant and bustling heart of Quebec, Canada. As the second most populous city in the country, Montreal reigns as the principal metropolis of the province of Quebec. Picture a captivating urban landscape that stretches over three-fourths of the Montreal island, the largest of 234 enchanting island in the Ushlega archipelago. Situated at the convergence of the majestic Ottawa and St. Lawrence rivers, often placed at the top of the most livable cities, today we dive into Montreal's history to learn how La Métropole developed. If you do enjoy this video, remember to like and subscribe, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Montreal's tales unfolds as a land of enchanting encounters and unfulfilled ambitions. You see, once known as Hochelaga by the Huron people, it was the French navigator Jacques Cartier who first set foot on its shores during his daring voyage to the New World in 1535 to 1536. Picture over a thousand Native Americans extending a warm embrace on the slopes of a magnificent mountain, Mont Royal. But as the years passed, Montreal's destiny remained in the hands of fate. It was more than five decades before another Frenchman, the founder of Quebec City, Samuel de Champlain, returned to the city. Yet the once vibrant Huron had vanished, leaving Champlain with a vision of untapped potential, a fur trade haven. With a bition of flame, he cleared the land and christened it Place Royale. However, his ambition never really truly materialized into anything. You see, Montreal's origins emerged not as a fur trade fort, but as a fervent missionary center. It was the visionary founder, Paul de Chemedy, Sieur de Maisonneuve, who breathed life into this small settlement in May 1642. With unvarying devotion, he christened it Ville Marie. Amidst the rugged wilderness, Paul de Chemedy, Sieur de Maisonneuve, laid the foundation of a burgeoning settlement, Ville Marie. With determination and foresight, he erected dwellings, a chapel, a hospital, and other essential structures, fortifying the community with a protective stockade against indigenous attacks. Yet, the path to prosperity was fraught with challenges. You see, the Iroquois aligned with the British, and they launched relentless assaults on the settlement. The echoes of conflict were constant through the years until a momentous peace treaty, La Grande Paix, was finally negotiated in 1701, ushering in an era of relative calm. Montreal's journey from a humble missionary settlement to a flourishing fur trade center is a tale of strategic location and rival ambitions. You see, Samuel de Champlain was onto something. Its favorable position along the St. Lawrence River allowed for easy access to the Great Lakes and the Gulf of Mexico, while the Ottawa River watershed facilitated movement west and north, creating a vast fur empire that France rival, Britain, sought to control. As Montreal emerged as the epicenter of the fur trade, it held a pivotal role in shaping the destiny of the region. However, despite its crucial transportation hub status, rapid population growth did not follow suit. By 1700, the population numbered fewer than a thousand. They were a small community with grand ambitions, yet the tide of immigration and the encouragement of settlement through the French seigneurial system breathed new life into Montreal. In just a few decades, the population surged to approximately 5,000 people, and this was around 1750. As we all know though, the New World was full of conflicts, and amidst the fierce military conflict between Britain and France, a defining moment took shape on the historic plains of Abraham, near Quebec City. In 1759, the British emerged victorious in this pivotal battle, marking a turning point in the fate of the region. The following year, in 1760, Montreal chose a different path, surrendering peacefully to British forces. With this surrender, Montreal, along with the entirety of New France, became an integral part of the vast British North American Empire in 1763. As the years marched on, Montreal's landscape evolved, and the fur trade slowly waned. Yet, the city's growth knew no bounds. Embracing its role as a thriving transportation hub, Montreal adapted with the times. The city shifted its strategy from shipment of furs to the trading of timber and agricultural produce, propelling it into the era of modernity. In 1796, a milestone was reached with the opening of Canada's very first public library. A year later, daily postal service was established, forging a vital connection between Montreal and the United States, further fostering the city's prominence. The visionary John Molson, an entrepreneur, brewer, and banker, left a great mark on Montreal's history, 
In 1809, he linked Montreal and Quebec City by water with the inauguration of the first Canadian steamship, paving the way for greater accessibility and commerce. In 1817, Canada witnessed the birth of its first bank, the renowned Bank of Montreal, which played a pivotal role in shaping the country's financial landscape. The city's progress continued with the commencement of the Canal in 1821, a feat that would effectively pave the way for the future St. Lawrence Seaway open up new horizons for trade and industry. As Canada expanded its horizons, Montreal emerged as a key player, becoming the nerve center for two transcontinental railways, the Canadian Pacific Railway and the Canadian National Railway. These rails linked the country from coast to coast, opening up a vast new territory for farming, forestry, and mining. The surge in economic activity led to a boom in population and demand for finished goods transforming Montreal into Canada's primary manufacturing, transportation, and financial hub. Innovation became the hallmark of Montreal's progress. The city saw its first electric lighting in 1882, electric tramways in 1892, and the advent of automobiles cruising along its streets and movie houses adorning its sidewalks in 1903. Post-World War II, North America experienced prosperity, and Montreal was no exception. The city's manufacturing industries expanded to meet the needs of a burgeoning population. An urban transformation took place with iconic landmarks such as Place Ville-Marie, the Metro Public Transportation System, and the grand hosting of Expo 67, putting Montreal on the international stage. But success had its challenges. While Montreal successfully won the bid to host the 1976 Olympic Games, the financial burden from building and maintaining facilities, including the Olympic Stadium, weighed heavily on the province and took until 2006 to be fully paid off. Montreal's journey was not just one of prosperity. It also played a significant role in Quebec's Quiet Revolution from 1960 to 1966. This period of liberal activism and reform fueled a growing sense of Quebecois nationalism and a recognition of the economic disparities faced by the province francophone majority population. You see, the Anglophone minority were in control of much of Quebec's economy, and this was centered in Montreal. The rise of the Parti Québécois in 1976 marked a political manifestation of this nationalism, seeking independence for Quebec through provincial referendums in 1980 and 1995. While both referendums ultimately failed, they impacted Montreal in a big, big way. A loss of business and population affected the city for several years, but it landed on its feet. Montreal now remains a dynamic city with a diverse economy and beautiful culture. It also has a growing population. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Write down in the comments what you'd like to see next. And if you have any other comments to add to this video, make sure to leave it down. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.